Hi, my name is Daniel Toscano. My father is 15 Broad Street, so 610 Boston Mass, um, 0219. I am representing uh, Nicholas Mori and his daughter Joanne Harmony. Unfortunately, uh, Joanne is traveling and unfortunately wasn't able to be here, so um, I want to express her apologies for not being here. And Nick, uh, fortunately, he attended the last few meetings, but uh, um, Going to make it here tonight, but I'm also here with the contractor, general contractor Bobby Spadamula, who's sitting in the back. Um, for those who don't know Bobby Spadamula, he's a lifelong resident of the neighborhood, done a lot of uh, projects here in the neighborhood, and he'll be working on this project. We're here respectfully requesting your support to change the legal occupancy of the premises from six residential units and two store fronts to eleven residential units and two store fronts. For those who are familiar with this site, if you can look on, if you want to flip over to the back there. It's really, it's two parcels. It's Stealing Street, 9296 Stealing Street, which is um, maybe more familiar with the Wild Duck, the, the liquor store that's there. So that's the existing building that houses six residential units on that particular building. We're not doing any work uh, to that building. Um, the owner also owns the Wigan Street, Great Wigan Street property, which is a single story, um, really dilapidated piece of property. That's a single story, uh, really dilapidated piece of property on Wigan Street. The, the properties have been owned by the, the Mori family for 20 plus years. They, uh, they want to develop this particular parcel to add five residential units. Um, and want to create, make it one address. So the, the legal address is going to be 9296 Sealing Street. Um, so it's going to end up being one property, and that's why we're changing it to 11 residential units. What we'd like to create is five single, uh, five one-bedroom units. The, the range of the square footage of them is going to be 512 square feet to 661 square feet. As you get a little higher, the square footage gets a little bit uh, bigger. Um, the, it's also going to, in regards to a couple of zoning issues um, in regards to this particular area. In Sealing Street, it's the, the neighborhood shopping district. Up, but, so the first floor residential unit is commercial uh, conditional use. So we're seeking relief for that particular area. However, if we maintain the Wicked Street address, that is in the multifamily residential uh, district of North End, which it would have been allowable use, but we're using the Sealing Street uh, address, so it falls into the neighborhood shopping district. So that's commercial. Uh, Conditional use or need relief from this. Then we also have the, the typical violations, zoning violations that we see with any creating new space and new units. We have the FAR. The FAR is excessive. Currently, what's there um, is the FAR is 2.1. And according to the zoning code, it, uh, the remaining ratio of 3. We are going above that. We're going to, once this new building is done, it's going to be 3.4. So slightly above. Uh, what's called for in the zoning code, so we relief from the FAR. So right now it's 2.1, we'll go into 3.4 as we put the addition, uh, the new building there. The, the open space uh, violation is because as part of this uh, district, you need to have some uh, open space. Um, we're not able to comply with the open space uh, zoning requirement. We're not proposing any roof decks. I understand roof decks has caused some significant issues in the neighborhood with the noise. Uh, so we're not proposing any roof decks. We're not proposing any balconies on the, uh, the new building. Um, at the footprint, that location is only 751 square feet. So there's really, you can't take away any more living space uh, from the area. We're not proposing any. So we're uh, requesting some relief for, for the open space. The uh, off-street parking is one of those issues that we see the common, common uh, zoning requirement that we're unable to comply with that zoning requirement. This site, we're unable to put parking at this particular site. So good thing is, and I always say, we're in the North End. If, you know, a lot of folks that move here, you know, use our public transportation and, and walk. Um, and the rear yard setback is one of those other things that we can't comply with uh, as we're not set back a certain amount of, amount of feet. So those are the zoning requirements. Uh, Violations that we're seeking to do from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Our hearing date is tentative set for October 20th. Um, there, as right now, there are existing fire escapes on the front of the building. Those fire escapes will be eliminated. There's going to be a second means of egress, which is going to be in the back of the building. Which, when you go down the back of that building, leads into the back of Barclay Place. And so, for a second means of egress, each New unit and the units, the existing units will have egress to that back stairwell and help move out of place in case of an emergency second means of egress. Um, we've had an abundance meeting. We had um, 
three residents that showed up at the advisory meetings only supported one was indifferent with one opposition to it. Um, the, the issue was trash. Um, and the issue of trash came up during the, the residents' association um, as we would create a trash room. We we're trying to put a trash room in the back behind Bottle of Play. However, as you can see through these new plans, we did create a trash room, which is going to be put a small room in the back of the existing building. And how you gain access to that um, trash room, where if you go down the back stairwell, so every resident will have access to the, the second unit of egress, and will have a door to enter into the trash room and place trash. And certainly, they the trash will be placed there, and, and speaking with the owner, would, this is also going to be an owner-occupied building. They do more than just plan on living in the property, so it'll be owner-occupied, um, and they're going to hire. A prop, well, Joanne is the property manager, and Nick's daughter, but they will hire somebody to remove the trash and take it out to the front where they, they put their trash out on the street. Um, the residents certainly don't have to use the trash room, but that's, you know, they leave the trash room, you know, in their apartment and put it out on the regular city trash nights, which is Sunday and, and the Thursday nights out uh, in the morning on Monday and Friday. We plan um, Joanne was on the property for, you know, really taking over for her dad and is, is for the last couple of years done a nice job and try to understand that this particular property had some problems that it was rat infested with some trash and over the last couple of years cleaned it up um so she's doing her best uh stay in touch with the, the tenants make sure that they're aware of the trash um, regulations of the city and want to put out the trash this seems to be the, the biggest problem the, the height of the building is proposed at 53 feet um, there's concern as to why going up to 53 feet. Um, it seems like a, a good fit at this particular location. As you look at this location on Wicked Street, as you know, is it going to cause any sunlight? Uh, people are going to be their sunlight. Doesn't appear. I'm no sun study expert, but it doesn't appear as the sun, you know, raises in the, the east and it comes over and, and it sets in the west down. And up. So you know the West End is not station. It's not going to doesn't appear that's going to affect anyone's sunlight. Certainly no views in that particular area um, and no airflow in that area. And the building to the left of it, which is Five Wood Street, which is owned by Matteo Gallo. We spoke with Mr. Gallo. We have a letter of support from Mr. Gallo. His building has been recently uh, developed. It might be within the last 10 years. I don't know exactly when. He supported the building. I spoke to a couple of members, residents over there, about the place. Um, you know, although not here and supportive, but you know, no problems with the development. Rather see a development and beautify that that area and make it look nice compared to what's there now. Um, I tried reaching out to the, the owners of the Mia restaurant. Um, however, my phone calls have gone unanswered, and my letters to them have gone unanswered. So I'm prepared to answer any questions. Uh, the, the the building, both, well, one building will be fully sprinkled. And, our protection so it'll be safer and uh, safer building as it is today because it'll be fully sprinkled. Um, the construction is going to take about three, four months, maybe, Bobby. Yeah, about three, four months. There will be some closure of Wicked Street, mm -hmm. uh, but periodically we'll certainly keep the neighborhood and uh, really the residents of uh, up to date on when that's going to take place. But the, you know, the contractor tells me there won't be any closures on Salem Street. Mm -hmm. but reason behind doing it as one building the reason behind doing it as one building because it's a very small lot to do it as a separate building yeah. if the square footage of the units will probably be much smaller than what is proposed by doing it as one building you're creating <coughs> additional living space because what they're going to do is the existing stairwell because even though the address is 92 96 Salem Street the main entrance is actually Wicked Street and that main entrance is going to remain and that that existing stairwell that takes you up to the fourth floor is going to be the stairwell that they use for the, um, the new building. So you'll be able to access the building. So if you're going in, the new units on the left hand side. Um, and one other issue that was brought up by my father, uh, and it's very important the, the existing building is only about 43 feet high. Um, and this building is a little higher. As you can see, there's a door from the uh, fifth floor unit that goes out to that um, unit. And so there was concern if people access that, but that door is going to be alarmed and locked, so no tenants can get out there because you'll have the air conditioning units and the condensers on it. And then how they're going to access um, the roof over the new building is going to be some type of ladder from the existing building going up. So there's not going to be any head house or hatch on the new, new building. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
No plans to put any roof back in it. No plans to put any roof back. Uh, Dan, the, the trash. So is this, you're saying the trash is going to go under the stairwell? Not under the stairwell. It's going to be going into the existing building. As you can look at the first floor. So if you look at the first floor plan. Yep, yep. So right below the first floor plan, there's a trash room. See that trash room? So it's not, it's within the building. It's not outside as we're in the so this is new, this is no, no within since we met with new okay. on the other day. So, so you'll be able to walk down the back stairwell. Every resident will be able to go by the down the second year of egress, and there'll be a door into the existing building, and there'll be a trash room right there. So prevent people from putting out trash when they're not supposed to. As we, we know we've had issues with residents doing so. So hopefully this is a place that they can put the trash in. You know when. Uh, how do you get out from uh, there to Bartlett Place? I'm going to say that again. How do you get from there to Bartlett Place? Bartlett Place, so if you go down Bartlett Place, um, if you walk from the back of Bartlett Place, there's there's an opening in the back of Terry near restaurant, and 12, uh, 8 to 12 Bartlett Place, the, the building, so there's an opening, and it is probably 10 to 15 foot wide. So that's the area. Way open. Yeah, I mean, they, I think the plot plan will show that the, the Mori family owns some of it, but it looks like the most of them might be owned by Terry Leo building. But we certainly need easement to have access to it. Uh, on the first floor with the trash is how big is that room? Four um, trash. You know how many feet it's like? Oh, I'm sorry. So I think it was about four six, six uh, feet. Four by six? Six barrels. Yeah. Six. Yeah. It looks like it's like four by four. Yeah. I'm sorry. So it's not for it's six barrels? Not for six barrels? Oh. Yeah. For 11 units? Right, that's, that's my question. Is, where is, the, is, that, is that big enough? Is that enough of a... Well, is, is it big enough trash room? I mean... Well, I guess that's the question. The room you're talking about, is this just for the new... No, it, it's, it's for, for both, both units. It's for both units. Okay. I mean, not every resident... Understood. Right. 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 So, so how much space is a lot of trash? How much... How big is that from the body? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if there's a couple of barrels in there, it, it's great. I mean, it's limited space because we're going into, you know, just like you know, going into a retail space, you know. So we just rent it out, and the existing the new building that's proposed is a lot of very small. We don't want to get any living room, but it's enough where we believe that we've made a good faith effort to work with the neighborhood and address the trash concerns. Did the others bring up the, I mean, often we talk about promoting, you know, more families coming in and like that, and the one bedroom that's sort of difficult. Right. Did anybody express, you know, opposition to having it all one bedrooms or? No one expressed any opposition to the one bedroom that I mean, As a family man here in the neighborhood, I'd love to see three bedrooms. Um, more development, more three bedrooms, but I think in this particular lot, it, with the new building, you probably can let you just going straight up and down, and, you know, and with the existing stairwell in the middle, you know, the existing units, uh, you know, because we're not doing anything other than I mean, the sprinkler systems, like two point nine. Oh, so you're right. Um, and then the sprinkler system, there's no more to move down to the new units, unless you just no plan to cut that out. So the, the, new, the, the old building does not sprinkle now, does it? Right, right. We'll be adding sprinkler so that the entire building will be sprinkled and fire protection. I'll let the cook. Like six by eight. Six by eight. Any, uh, any, <coughs> any butters? Hi. Hi, I'm Marlon Taylor from yeah. Salem Street. Um, definitely have some comments. Terms. Um, trash has definitely been an issue for quite a while. Um, I make some comments to you guys, but I'm on, I am on the floor of 90 Salem Street. I'm sorry, I don't have any. But there's still trash on the roof of 9296 Salem Street. It's been there since November of 2012. They've known about it since then because um, this this they tried to do this building in 2012 and had meetings and gone through it. I brought that up at that meeting. Nothing's been done. They were aware of this in July. It's still trash on the roof. They were aware of this three weeks ago. This is, it's still trash on the roof. It's on 9296 Salem Street. That's the roof with right, all the graffiti right. that yep, you see yep. there as well. But you say they've known about it. They, yes. Yes. They were, they were at the zoning. The board. Sorry about it. Yes. Okay. 
because this was brought up at the, uh, the council meeting as well as the resident association meeting in 2012. It was also brought up at the abutters meeting that we had in July, and it was also brought up three weeks ago at the zoning, um, the newer zoning meeting. It was also brought up, so it's still there. Um, so that's kind of a, there's, there's no regard for the neighborhood, there's no regard for cleaning up the trash and dealing with it. Um, they are now saying for the trash room, but it's a, it's in the last few weeks that that has come up. Um, just haven't maintained the building. I feel that it's, yeah, if you look at some of those pictures, you can see what the top of Freeway Street looks like. It's been like that since the four and a half years that I've owned it. I mean, I've owned across the street. It's looked like that. There's all the trash there. There's no regard for upkeep. You don't have to put a new building to maintain what you have. I have my issue with that. You can clean it up, your, your own stuff. You don't have to build a new building to do it. But if you haven't maintained it, I mean, the year's there now, how are they gonna maintain it moving forward? As a little issue in that, if they haven't had a regard for the building now, what is it gonna be like? Um, you can see graffiti on the roof. It's also been there for about three years, which is not, I, oh, I just wake up and see that every day. That's fantastic to see trash and that amount of graffiti on the building that is obviously gained access through. There's um, fire escapes that you can go right to the roof that you can see. Um, to me, I feel like there's no need to go up five stories. Um, they say there's, no gonna be, there's not gonna be a roof deck. They can say that now. I guarantee you, I would put money on it that they're gonna be here in another year or two asking for a deck. There's a door going on to the existing roof. There's no need to go taller than the existing building that they're trying to attach to. Um, they're gonna put a new building. They're also not, they're gonna put sprinklers in the old building, but they're not gonna, it doesn't seem like there's any plans to maintain and upgrade the current building that's there. So I have kind of a concern about that. Like you're putting brand new, but then going with a very old building. Um, you're meshing two things. Um, what else do I have? Trash is definitely the biggest issue on that, that I see on that. Just, I've seen it, I've, my, my building has been actually gotten yeah, violations for trash in the, in the past over the years. We've seen that happen. Not as much as it was before, but we have seen a number of times that happen. But you know, like, just no regard for the building, the neighborhood, you know, where are the buildings. Yeah, yeah it's actually, I saw that from my window. So they were actually climbing out that top floor window and climbing up that ladder that's the fire safe onto the roof, and then they were partying on the roof. So that's, that is what I had seen, witnessed. Um, and the trash, and from that day, the trash and the garbage that's been there has been there since that day. So they, uh, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Uh, I've just addressed it. I mean, you know, she showed up with me and she said, I spoke with the contractor. The contractor formed in March 2013, was it? Or 12? I mean, no, 14. The door roof is done? Yeah, 2014, the roof won on the 1996 Salem Street was completely done. I mean, the pictures of the roof is from 2011. No, the, the other pictures are the larger on there. We're taking the day after the yeah. zoning board but meeting. That and trash would have been off that roof. roof. The, took us today. Is the only access up there is a, uh, a ladder on the outside of the building, which has got to come down. It's no good. I tried to get up there, and it, it was pulling up. I just had all the fire escapes done, all redone over. The, the graffiti is not on our building, but I understand it may be a concern. Maybe it, they access our roof through the graffiti, but we can't take, we can't find our building. Graffiti is not on our building, it's on the Terramia building. Um, you know, but as you said, the, the people climbing up there was, was a 2011 picture. Um, the current owner, um, speaking with Joe Andrews, the Andrews can be managing the property, uh, is well aware of it and is taking it seriously, and that's why he implemented the trash room. Um, contractors have been with the contract on a daily basis and been very well aware that there may have been trash issues in this area and we're staying on top of it. Uh, there was problems in the past and the <laughs> man has cleaned it up uh, tremendously. So uh, we think that adding and leaving it a dilapidated piece of property is not beneficial to the neighborhood. It certainly is a high store. It's you know it's not good for the value of the abutting properties in the neighborhood and can fixing it and and then did a new building that's going to be uh, sort of a contract and not only is the, <coughs> the new building and the, the front of the, uh, the side on Wicked Street that's going to make them uniform, make them beautiful, more, um, uniform together so that you know they match and it's prettier and, and it's more beautiful in the neighborhood. So to, to leave it a dilapidated piece of property, uh, it's you know, probably not a beneficial to the neighborhood. But Dan, are you suggesting that 
you need to build something new to get rid of dilapidation? No, you don't need to build something new, but it's been a dilapidated piece of product. I understand. And, and you know, and there's just been some trash issues. I've, I've talked to Code Enforcement about the issue, and you know, and if there's been a problem, I've, I've received that they have had some violation. Um, certainly not, doesn't appear to be a habitual violator, but have, have a few with one uh, open matter since 2000. And, uh, Two thousand and fifteen is one one in two thousand and thirteen, one in two thousand and ten. So there's some violations from code enforcement. I asked code enforcement for a complete record of, of any violations on those two properties, and that's what you know, they provided me. But I think you can all go on code enforcement's website and, and check it out for yourself. But um, so we're you know, we'd be willing to work, you know, working with the neighborhood, putting a beautiful building that's going to benefit the entire neighborhood. I really have you no know, negative effect on the parties or uh, the surrounding neighborhood. Absolutely not. I, I have a couple. I have a couple of concerns. Um, you know, I, I think, I think you know, if you look at Wigan Street, the statistics show that uh, the trash citations are higher there than anywhere else in the North End. Right, and, and now, and, and, and uh, listen, I appreciate the fact you guys came back with, with the new trash room. Uh, the problem is that I see the room is maybe six by six, maybe six by eight. The average, the average condo in the North End probably goes to two trash barrels a week. Uh, perfect, ballpark. So let's just say the 11 years, that's 22 barrels. Is, is this, um, no, for sure. Well, I, my family. No, we're family of four. Two yeah, kids, two adults. We go through two barrels. Two. One bedroom, I we, know. <laughs> no, no we, we go through two. Uh, two bags of uh, heavy collection, so four bags a week. Okay. So let's just call that a ballpark. Call it a bag and a half. Let's put the difference. So now you're looking at 18 bags, roughly, for garbage. Is that room going to be big enough for, for the trash? Oh, yeah. You know? For both buildings. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some, some way. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you absolutely yes, because they make a good faith effort to put something there where they don't have to put anything in there, and they're being good neighbors to put a trash room to alleviate some of the trash. Now, is everybody going to be using the trash room? No. Is the person who lives on the fifth floor or the fourth floor going to bring their trash down and bring their trash room? Maybe, maybe not. But maybe they keep in the kitchen like most of us do, keep in the kitchen like we've done for 100 years, and our folks that live there and grew up here, keep in the kitchen in your hallway and you bring it down in the trash morning or at night. So, to make a strong, good, big effort to put a trash room where we didn't have to, and a big enough room where it holds a, would hold a significant amount of trash. I think it would it, it would alleviate if there's any problems, uh, address the problem. So then just, I mean, obviously you guys didn't have to add this room. Um, so just out of curiosity, somebody who lives on the fifth floor is gonna have to walk down the fire escape to get to it? No, there's not a fire, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a stairwell. Fire, fire escape? It's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be a full um, exterior stairwell. Yeah, the second you leave that's not going to be a fire escape, right? And Bob, am I correct to say it's not a fire escape? No, that it's stairwell. Uh -huh. The back stairwell, the second you leave that, it's going to be a full set of stairs. Yeah. Interior. 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 Okay. Interior. 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 Okay. And then somebody who gets the truck is going to have to go out the back to Bob and place my come around to a front. So, we're good. So yes, so the thought process is what we hire is going to have to take that track and bring it onto Wigan Street where it will be stored. Um, there was no room to try to put this in the, the front of the building, which would, would have been nice. Um, we're very well aware of that area by the place collects a lot of track, and by no means have we have any intent of putting the trash there. As code enforcement, and if you can go by there on every morning, code enforcement is out there. I mean, I see it when I walk to the gym. Code enforcement is there, going through that trash, to make sure that the, you know the people who are supposed to put trash there have put it there. By no means are we plan on putting in, uh, the trash at bottom place. So yes, to, to bring it out. Yeah. Any other questions from the council? Any other butters or neighbors? Anybody don't have uh, area for trash. We have all our life. We have to have yards. But these people have no place to put their, their barrels. Yep. They leave them out. So what's the one that they change? Salem Street's a mess anyway. The Western's in a mess. They want to play in the building? I don't think so. We have all our life. We know. Yeah, many streets have no bags. They have no place to put their bags. 
we're allowed to have a yacht, but most of my neighbors don't have yachts. So where do they put it? They put them in a bag and throw them in the street. Well, I'll just say, this is a small, Walk uh, around. small property, uh, but they build a new building, like I said, and make significant efforts to work with the neighbors, put a trash over there. The majority of the do not have trash in. So um, that seems to be the number one concern. If we, we address it, I hope they take that into consideration and take it vote. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I want to make a motion to vote. I'll make a motion and we vote. Does everybody want to fill it out and pass it down as well?